Not sure what you should choose between the M1 Mac Mini and the new 24 inch iMac with the M1? I'll help you decide. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews. Thank you as always for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. First things first, Apple has done a fantastic job with their new M1 chip. I've done loads of content about this, which I'll link to in the description. So just very quickly, this video isn't gonna talk really about the M1 chip. I'm gonna assume you either know about that or you've gone off and done your research. If you haven't, go off and watch my other videos. It's just brilliant. It, you just might as well get one. There's no reason to buy an Intel Mac anymore, unless you're doing proper, proper pro work. But Let's assume you're not doing that. Before Apple's spring loaded event last week, if you were looking for an M1 Mac, the only choice you really had to make was if you were going for the laptop version. And that's because you'd have to decide between the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air. Now, Apple have thrown a completely new computer into the mix, which is their 24 inch iMac, which also has the M1 processor. And that raises quite an important question if you're going for a desktop Mac. Do you go for the M1 Mac mini or do you go for the 24 inch iMac? Today, I'm gonna to help you make that decision. So the first thing to get your head around is the two different types of computer we're looking at here because the iMac and the Mac mini are two very different devices. So when you buy an M1 Mac mini from Apple, they just send you that. You get a Mac mini and a power cable, that's it. That means you have to buy a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, probably a webcam as well. The iMac on the other hand is what is called an all-in-one. So you get everything in the box that you need. You get the computer, you get the screen, you get the mouse, you get the keyboard. You literally get it out of the box, put it on your desk, plug it in and away you go. So there's a lot of convenience with the iMac. If you just don't want any stress, you don't have to think about buying additional stuff. The iMac is pretty much the obvious choice really. So the iMac for convenience and the Mac mini, because it is just the box, you do have to buy that extra stuff. Me personally, I enjoyed that because it enabled me to get this great big 34 inch widescreen monitor that I have in front of me. And it also enabled me to get into things like mechanical keyboards. Now, obviously you can use these on an iMac as well, but you know, when you buy an iMac, it comes with a keyboard and mouse. So you're gonna probably wanna use that to begin with anyway. In terms of how much space they take up on your desk, they're about the same really, if you consider the fact that the Mac mini, if you're used to big tower PCs, you'll be amazed by how small the Mac Mini is. It's a tiny little box, basically, and you can hide it pretty much anywhere. The new iMac, as well, is, has got a very small footprint. It doesn't take much space. Apple have always said with the iMac they want the computer to almost disappear, and the new one, it's ridiculously thin, very light, not that that matters. It just comes down to whether or not you want something out of the box that works, or something which you have to buy extra things to make it work. But there is one big difference between the two. I personally think that nothing beats an iMac screen at the price Apple make you pay for it. Now, the base level iMac is 1299, whereas the base level Mac mini is 699. That means you're essentially paying $600, 600 pounds for a 4K or 4.5K retina screen that you get on the iMac. That's not a bad deal at all. Just to give you an idea, this 34 inch widescreen monitor that I have on my desk was about 300 pounds, I think when I bought it, it was on, on sale. It's nowhere near as sharp as the iMac I have behind me. And that's all to do with pixel density. I won't go into the, get into the weeds with that. But basically it's very difficult to get a screen that is as sharp and has the depth of color that you get from iMac screens. You've got to spend a lot of money. If I wanted, to, for example, to get a 34 inch widescreen monitor that is the same quality as the iMac or near enough the same quality, I have to spend upwards of a thousand pounds on it. So while the iMac's base price versus the Mac mini's base price is that $600 difference, you are getting a superb screen for it. And as mentioned, it's a 4.5K screen. It has P3 color, which is the color space it uses. That basically means it's very, very, vibrant color, nice, deep, rich colors. It also has True Tone, which is this technology which basically changes the color temperature of the screen based on the ambient light. And that means that the whites always look white, basically. Again, if you're looking for ultra convenience and the best possible screen for your money, then the iMac does beat the Mac Mini because it's you'd have to spend a lot of money to get a similar 4K screen. You can get the LG Ultra Fine, which is a 4K screen. I've never used one, but the reviews have never been that good, and it's ugly. Now, if the screen isn't a big deal to you, you might be thinking about the specs now, and it's important to bear in mind that the iMac, the 24-inch iMac that Apple have recently launched, is basically a Mac Mini. There are some differences, which I'll come on to in a moment, but it's basically a Mac Mini squashed into that little chin beneath the screen on the iMac. You can't get a more powerful iMac over the Mac mini or vice versa. They are just the same computer. Now the iMac does also offer this weird seven core GPU base spec. I've talked a lot about this previously. I have the seven core GPU version of the 
MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air. And I've compared that against the eight core GPU in my M1 Mac mini, and it's no different. I can edit, for example, 4K video on both machines without any trouble. I can edit raw photos easily on both. Don't sweat it over that seven core thing. It looks a bit weird on the, on the website, and it's, it's clever marketing tactics by Apple. It's also, I won't get into the weeds with this either, but it's also to do with the manufacturing processes. Don't worry about it. If you want that base level iMac, go for it. You will not miss that one GPU core. The RAM debate, I will link to a video above about the eight gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte. But my advice with this is if you can get the 16 gig and it doesn't hurt your wallet, go for it. If you can't afford it, don't sweat it. Unless you're gonna be doing very, very intensive work. If you're, a, for example, a professional video editor, I wouldn't recommend getting the eight, the eight gigabyte version. Same thing for if you're a professional web developer. It's very similar to the seven core GPU thing, really. If you can't afford the extra $200 to go for the 16 gig, do not sweat it, please. The only other noticeable difference, really, with between the iMac and the M1 Mac Mini is that the iMac has two fans, whereas the Mac Mini has one fan. Now, again, I wouldn't sweat it about this. That doesn't mean that the iMac, for example, can run faster. It's probably to do with the screen. My, my guess with this is that Apple have put that second fan in because there's a screen built into the iMac, and that produces heat, and they're probably just being cautious, making sure that the M1 chip has enough cooling just in case things get hot in there. But in my experience, doing pretty heavy content workflows on my M1 Mac Mini, it never gets hot. I've never heard the fan come on. So yeah, the, the fact that the iMac has two fans versus one fan in the Mac Mini, again, I wouldn't sweat that either. So again, with specs, because they're pretty much the same computer, it comes back to that whole thing about do you want a screen built in for convenience and, and the best quality screen that you can get at the price? Or do you want to buy something where you can add things onto it, like your own screen, your own widescreen, and all those kind of things? But one thing that can make a difference with the Mac Mini and the iMac is how clean you keep that computer. And I'm a long-term user of a product called Clean My Mac X. It's developed by a company called MacPaw. They are very kindly sponsoring this video. And it's used by 5 million users who clean terabytes of junk from their Macs daily. Now I ran, for the first time ever, I ran Clean My Mac X on my Mac Mini, which I've been using for about three months now. And immediately it found 28 gig of files that I just didn't need. It's just junk, basically. Things that are kind of built up when you install programs, when you download stuff and things are left behind. 28 gig of disk space I, I retrieved basically, and that was just with one button, done. It also includes malware detection. And the one thing I really like about Clean My Mac X is that it has this proper app remover. Now, if you've never used a Mac before, uninstalling apps doesn't really work in the same way as Windows. Occasionally, the developer will give you an uninstaller, but that's actually quite rare. So if you wanna find out more about Clean My Mac X, visit the link in my description, check it out. I highly recommend it. I only accept sponsorships on this channel from software that I use and like, and this one is, like I say, it's a long-term favorite of mine. There are some of the minor differences between the M1 Mac Mini and the iMac. The first one is pretty obvious when you go to the website, and it is the colors. Now, the M1 Mac Mini is a bit dour. It just comes in this kind of silver, the, the standard Apple silver. So if you really want a computer that can, kind of shouts loud as soon as you walk into the room, and you want it to perhaps match with the decor in your studio or your bedroom or whatever, it might be, then the iMac, it's the obvious choice. There's seven colors available with the new 24 inch iMac. And weirdly, if you want the orange or the purple, that comes at the next level up. So you technically have to spend an extra $200 to get those colors. The iMac also has a built-in webcam. Macs have never been very good with their webcams. The webcams, even in the, the, the latest laptops, are dreadful. The webcam in my 27 inch iMac back there is horrendous. The new one in the new iMac is 1080p, so it's gonna be on par with what you can get from a third party, really. But obviously with the Mac Mini, it doesn't come with a webcam. You have to buy that yourself. Now with ports, it gets quite interesting. So on the M1 Mac Mini, you get two Thunderbolt ports and two USB-A ports. You also get a built-in gigabit ethernet. And that's true across the entire range of the M1 Mac Mini. You don't get additional ports or less ports, depending on what you spend. That is what you get. With the 24-inch iMac, it's a bit different. So on the base level, you just get two Thunderbolt ports. That's it. Now you have to go to the next level up, which is the that $200 step up, basically, to get two more ports. But they are USB 3 ports, not Thunderbolt ports. And it's a similar story with the Ethernet port. So again, going back to the Mac Mini, it's there as standard. On the iMac, it's not. If you buy the base level iMac, there's no Ethernet port. So you'd have to just use Wi-Fi for your connectivity. Now, at the time of filming this video, it's not clear whether or not you can upgrade to the Ethernet port on the iMac, which is actually built quite cleverly into the power brick, which sits 
beneath your desk, basically. But it's worth bearing in mind, because if you connect your desktop computer directly to your router, you can do that straight out of the box with the Mac Mini, even with the base level, but with the iMac, you do have to spend a bit more for that. Very quick one on the speaker. The speaker in the M1 Mac Mini is horrendous. They've not touched it in years. It's just a tinny, horrible thing. The speakers in the new iMac, however, have been developed by their very talented audio team. And just from experience with the 16-inch MacBook Pro, even the, the M1 MacBook Air, they do fantastic things now with computer speakers, bar the M1 Mac Mini, whereas with the iMac, you have a really good pair of speakers built in. The last thing is the keyboard, and if you buy the new iMac, you can get an option that has a Apple Magic keyboard with Touch ID built in. And that's a pretty big deal, because Touch ID is just fantastic for security in terms of logging onto your Mac, for authorizing payments, for remembering passwords, all that stuff. It's really, really useful. Again, it doesn't come with the base level iMac, it's a paid upgrade, but you don't get that option with the Mac Mini. If biometric security is something that you really want with your Mac, you have to get the iMac and pay the extra for that Touch ID keyboard. So in conclusion, which one do you go for? Well, it's I think it's actually quite straightforward. The pricing is a little bit misleading. If you buy the base level iMac, you're getting a fantastic screen with that versus the screen that you don't get with the base level M1 Mac Mini, and in fact, any of the Mac Minis. They are just a box, nothing else. So if the screen's important to you and you want the best possible screen for your money, get the iMac. Same thing with colors. If you want a colorful computer, that's no problem at all, but you have to go for the iMac. Now, if the screen doesn't really bother you too much and if the colors aren't a thing for you at all, then the M1 Mac Mini is a brilliant choice. And obviously, if you're smart, and you buy a relatively low cost or secondhand monitor, keyboard and mouse, etc. You you could spend quite a bit less actually than the iMac. It's worth remembering that the base level Mac Mini is only six nine nine. It's still the cheapest entry point into the Mac OS ecosystem. So yeah, if you can find some bargains in terms of your your screen and your keyboard and your mouse, etc., then you could end up saving quite a bit of money. So it really is the screen that is a differentiating factor between the two of them. Don't get hung up on specs. Spend what you can. Maximize the RAM if you can. Don't worry about it if you can't. Same thing with the SSD space. If you can't stump up the price for two terabytes, which is a ridiculous amount of space, just go for as much as you can, basically. Just think about the screen, the colors, and you'll pretty quickly work out which one's for you. Now, I'll be doing a full review of the 24-inch iMac relatively soon, but I have already spent quite a bit of time reviewing the M1 Mac Mini. So if you want to find out exactly what I think about that computer, if, you know, if you're going down that route, keep watching for a link to that video. But until next time, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.